Hello everyone, welcome to another Transformers toy review. Today we're going to take a look at the Kingdom Wolf Cybertron Trilogy Autobot Arc. So I still haven't actually opened Scorpion Arc, so uh, I kind of skipped ahead and, and thought I'd take a look at this one. Um, yeah, so that's that. Cool artwork, as always. You know, you've got him on the front there. And he's got all of Megatron in his hand. Looks as if he's about to pulverize him. And uh, in what looks like prehistoric Earth. You've kind of got him in both modes there. Because you see you've got him kind of crashed into the volcano there. And um, I'm just going to get up and, and show you on the other bits of it. And then from up here, I bring that down there. You see you've got the uh, Nemesis star screen sort of coming out. It looks like black arachnid dropping from there. Air rays on the side there. And then I kind of twirl it around. <clears throat> okay. And then on the back there, you've got everything that's included. So you get uh, the arc. You get mainframe, it kind of transforms into Teletron 1. And then you get your other accessories, so you get like golden disc um, and your sort of little Teletron sort of scanner thing. And your little Optimus Prime and a few other sort of features. Um, and then on the other side, uh, not much to tell on the other side, just says uh, you get a few sort of pterodactyls flying around and you get, it just says that it's a Titan class figure. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we'll open it up, take a look at the figure, kind of go through everything, um, all the accessories and bits and pieces, do some size comparisons, transformation, all that type of thing, and uh, we'll go from there. Right, here we go. So here he is out of the packaging. So this is how he comes. So I think there's a few bits to add on and do. Looks like there's a, a piece that comes on here. There's additional blast effects, so you get uh, two of those sort of ones in there, kind of like a an aqua sort of uh, kind of greeny blue sort of colour. So I think we got these ones with Jetfire. I think I'm going to sneeze. So two of those, and they want to all kind of plug into each other so it can make one large blast effect. Uh, two of these ones as well. And then these two as well. And you can peg them into each other. Like that to make one larger blast effect. Or you can plug them in separately. Other things that you do get as well is your tiny little Optimus Prime that's in there as well. It's looked like he's on like yellow translucent plastic and then or just translucent plastic and then painted red so just all one color and then you get these two pieces here which are separate now um looking at i haven't looked at instructions yet but just kind of looking at it i think these will uh, peg onto the side i think it looks as if as if they should do Yeah, well, it looks like these should pick onto there, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it looks as if these peg in, in here, looks like. Unless I've got that drastically wrong. Yeah, like that, on that corner. And then the same on the other corner. So you get the view from here. And obviously these blast effects can just plug into any of these. Because of the color and stuff like that, they didn't um, stand out so much. Um, maybe it would have been better to have them kind of red or something like that. 
and then this one on this side here. Again, they just peg over this bit here. And I think the reason they've done that is just to make it fit in the box better. Um, and then it looks as if this bit's open up because I could hear a load of a rattling around and, and things like that. So not all of this looks as if it's pegged in properly. So that looks as if it opens up there. Ah, that's that comes over like that, you see. And that is the kind of the mode there. Let's uh, bring it up a second so you can see what it looks like in that mode. So that's it, kind of standing it upright like that. I don't think I've got everything quite plugged in correctly. It looks as if there's a few bits where it's just not quite lined up yet. So I probably just need to have a bit of a play around with it. But uh, just for scale, have I got Galvatron on here. So there's Galvatron at the bottom. Just as a bit of a, a size comparison there. That's quite good. Um, and then in terms of like deco and stuff like this, uh, these are all painted. And then you get some yellow paint throughout. So yellow detailing all around a few places. You get uh, these clear sort of cockpit sections in here where you've got translucent plastic, which you can sort of see through into the sort of cabin. You've got this kind of silver kind of weathering all around the side here, which is done pretty nice. And then uh, gray either side here. Autobot symbols on either side, which is done uh, very well. Um, sorry, because I've got this on this kind of background stuff. I keep on getting little bits and things on it. Um, these don't move around. Oh no, it's damage to one of these. That's actually broken in the box. So that's broken. I didn't notice that. I was going to say the packaging's pretty good, but what I did notice with it is is just kind of cardboard bits either side to hold everything in. Um, so somewhere along the lines, that's kind of knocked off. So, um, yeah, I have to contact Hasbro about that, see what they can do. I'm not sure what they can do. Um, I'll see if the bit's still in there, I can try and stick it around. I did say, didn't I, I could hear something rattling around. So that is what it probably is. And then if I turn it around onto the other side. You got the same detailing here. Really nice blue paint in here actually. And silver on here. And again, nice detail with the guns. Uh, been really cool if those uh, were able to move around or anything. Um, I'm just going to check the box, see if that piece is in there anywhere. Because uh, if it is, at least I can kind of see the glue it on or something. Um, but no, it's, uh, yeah, it's not in there anywhere, unfortunately. So yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. So uh, yeah, there is also supposed to be Teletran in here as well, isn't there? So um, ah, I think also as well, looking at the instructions, it's uh, you can actually there's like stands that come up for this as well. So you can actually well, obviously stand them up. So what you can do, I'm just going to lift them up a second, just. Yeah, you hear that? So, that piece is in there somewhere, rattling around. Um, right, so yeah, it looks as if underneath there's these bits here. 
where these will fold out. This bit does, on, on mine anyway, sort of came off. Um, it clips back in, but it's one of these things when you detach all the little, all the uh, bits of plastic, sort of the plastic wiring and stuff, that came out. And you see if I can find where that kind of loose bit is. Oh yeah, and looks like accidentally oh, I found the little um, sort of ramp that comes out just down at the bottom here. That's pretty cool. And you just press that to release it, which is a nice little feature. Um, it's quite tricky to manhandle this one while. Uh, Got everything on camera. So I'm just going to look to see. I'm just going to have a play around with it off camera a second and uh, come back. Right, I've worked out the first bit in terms of getting Teletran 1 in. So I've kind of half done it and then done it back up again. But basically, this piece here kind of pegs down, comes back over here, at um, which point you can peg that down, just leave that there, which kind of shows the robot head um, in there. Um, you then unpeg these bits from the side here, and just push this back like this, and it just opens up. And then you've got Teletran kind of sitting in here, kind of in his chest, and it just comes out like that, and goes off to the side. Um, and obviously you can have the arc kind of folded up and kind of as it is, if you want to. Um, what I do do now is just take a quick look at this uh, Teletran piece. Right, so this is Teletran as it's been kind of plucked out. Um, you can see as it comes out, you've kind of got, got this little globe thing which plugs into there which you see is very easy to kind of spin off and lose uh, a golden disc thing in here so you get actually two of them in here so they're kind of slotted away in here so you get a bit of detailing on there on each side on the back it says the sounds of earth and then open it up here again Sounds of Earth on the back there. So they are two different discs. And as you open that up, you sort of see a few different bits and pieces. Um, I'm going to take that off because I'm worried it's going to come off. Uh, and then, as far as transforming this guy, it looks fairly simple. As in, you just kind of unplug everything, I think. Um, a lot of this looks as if it's kind of retooling off a uh, silver bolt. Uh, combiners walls figure so and you can see at the top here you've got your other figure as well your sort of teletran system thing just come off yeah so it comes out a little bit looks like the head comes up just ah this pops out as well. So you've got that as well, your sort of thing where he goes off and scans all the other robots. That's quite good. Moves either way, this painted silver. So it's not, it's not a bad little piece. Um, and as for mainframe here, which is quite cool, is uh, 
he's an action master, but um, obviously he's yellow, so he's in the same colours as the Teletran kind of thing. I'm not sure which way around the legs go just yet, so I'm just going to have a bit of a play around with him. I think this bit is going to come up so that it goes into there like that. And then these arm pieces are going to come round. The fists are going to fold out like that. This bit opens up and you fold out the arms like so. Yeah, I'm not sure if these bits are supposed to go out like that or not. Um, yeah. Ah, does this all fold around? Looks like this might fold around. I'm just checking how this works. Ah, this 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 leg. I think it's on a it's on a rotation. Uh, rotates around, but it actually rotates around. So then you keep that as it is, and that goes around like that. Is it? No. Ah, oh, no. See, I've got that wrong. This this whole piece rotates around. So it's round. Yeah, it was that bit like that bit. Yeah, and I had it round the right way to start off with. Let's so rotate his foot back round like that. So then just rotate that around like that. And then it looks like you fold those pieces back around like that. And you've got them stood up like so. Yeah, pretty cool little figure. I mean, he is blocky as hell with all these like extra bits and pieces on. Uh, but still quite nice. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the other things I didn't notice about it is um, the bit where you kind of plug this bit in here as well. That also is like a little stand for Optimus as well. So that's another thing that you can do with it. Um, and you know here he is kind of like alongside the rest of the arc here so it's a decent size it's kind of like a like a Voyager size figure so if I then bring in Galvatron again let's reach over and grab him and bring him in yeah, so um, I kind of scale. Yeah, I guess he's a large deluxe, sort of medium Voyager, I guess. That sort of scale. Um, and he's got some decent articulation on him. The sort of head rotates around. Nice uh, paint in there. And uh, a great big visor, which has got uh, loads of light piping in. Uh, these arms sort of rotate around and out to the side. Movement there, swivel there. Uh, they are kind of hindered by this piece here a little bit. You do get waist articulation, but uh, yeah, he's, I mean, he's got this great big backpack, isn't he? So that's a bit tricky. And the legs go up, not back much, but out to side, swivel there, and then a decent bend in the knee there. Um, and then he's got a rocker, which goes all the way out to there. Uh, nothing forward or backwards on the toes. Uh, and then that's that bit on the back that I mentioned where you can plug in that thing and then you've got a little space there for your Optimus to put them as well. Um, and you've got an Autobot symbol in here, silver paint, yellow in here, nice grey paint in here as well. And uh, yeah, pretty solid looking figure. It's quite cool that you've got like an extra thing to go with it, with this one. I think when most people were thinking you're going to get 
a arc figure. No one really thought that we'd get a Teletran figure as mainframe. So that's a really neat idea, I think. Anyway, let's uh, take a look back at the arc now. Right then. <clears throat> so I've got him in his vehicle mode or arc mode. And <clears throat> I've done the transformation a couple of times. So I've kind of got it so it pegs a little bit better together. So there's there's some pegs in here where it kind of clips over the, the top half. Those don't peg in all that well. This bit here does actually hold the back end in a lot better. Um, and there's a couple of bits when you come to see his transformation where you see how this piece here kind of slots in down at the bottom here as well. And how the bottom end kind of tucks into the uh, almost like the crotch of the main transformer piece which kind of when you get it out of the box and you kind of play around with it if bits are a little bit loose um, it doesn't seem to hold together that well it's probably worthwhile kind of transforming it and then transforming it back and then you kind of understand better where everything goes if that makes sense um, uh, I can still hear the rattling bit in from from this bit here and it looks like there's a little stress mark on that one there I can hear where it is I just can't get to it um, the way that they've done the legs on these is actually really good but it means that actually that bit is kind of like sealed up so I can't get to it um, but you know that's cool I can I can live with that I can always paint over that bit or do something to it um, there's a couple of little peg marks on here we can add like blast effects as well so there's a few kind of dotted around where you can add them uh, and that's, I mean, you can add the ones that you've got already, um, but you, there are like different ones that you can add that kind of look like it's, you know, the arcs being kind of shot at and things like that. So you can add those all around there as well. So that's um, a cool thing that you can do. Um, I mentioned about the cockpit and everything else. I'll get into the transformation. So first thing, open this bit up here and then pick that in here. And you see it's, that's, this bit's already start to come open because uh, it kind of lifts over and holds over that bit there. So it kind of pegs it together. So pop that in, close that in, so that's fine. Don't need to worry about that. This bit here, uh, down this end here, you want to kind of pull it out towards you. You can just leave it like that if you want to. Or you can come around to the back here. And I'll just adjust it slightly, camera slightly, a second. And you come around and you just take it around the back. At the same time, just fold, fold down these other pieces here as well, like that. And then from the back here, you've got these side pieces here and you just wanna unpeg them like that. So they're a little bit loose. Come around here and then This piece here lifts up like that. So it goes all the way up. These pieces here then, I don't know if you can see that, these pieces here fold in like that on either side. Uh, the head, by the way, rotates around. This is where the Teletran 1 thing goes in here. Uh, and these pieces here on either side, these are basically the arms, these top pieces here, and they're kind of folded in. And if you kind of push it up like this, you can actually see where this bit here is pegged into there. So it just makes a little bit more sense. They kind of come down there and slot in over there. And those are those two bits that kind of kind of peg into here. Um, but uh, they don't really, because there's nothing really to kind of hold them in. Uh, this piece here kind of comes around the other way around. So it comes around like that. And there's going to be pieces where that'll peg in there, but um, you'll see what I mean. So you lift this piece up and then the arm comes out like this. And then you want to rotate this bit around so the Autobot symbol is facing you. And then there's like a, a notch at the back of this gray piece here. I'm just gonna just fill into there. So then you know the arm's in like that. And then the same on the other side that and then just so nice stiff ratchets 
like that. If you want to at this point, you can actually bring this bit down here and you'll notice this kind of pegs of these bits are going to come into here. It should just clip into place on either side and then you kind of push this chest section in just a bit further down the bottom there. Um, it kind of pegs in, but not very well, but uh, it, it holds just fine. And now the arms, you want to fold them out like this. So lots of clicky clacks like that. Uh, and then if you see in here, I'll just fold it around here. You've got the hand in here. So as you fold this out, instead of leaving like an empty space, you've got this piece in here, which is like attached to it. So as you fold it in, it kind of goes in with it. So that's quite a neat piece, actually. They could have just left that open and people would have complained about the open gap and everything else like that. Um, so they've done something just to fill that in, which is nice. And then you, know, you wanna, I think it's that way that you kind of half the hands out like that. Same on the other side. Getting the hands into here. And it's quite cool as you pull it out, everything else kind of comes out at the same time. Uh, the only weird thing I thought about their hands, uh, obviously the, the choice of them is a little bit odd, but um, you've kind of got these um, gaps here at the top. So it just seems like there should be like pieces to fill in there. Uh, it just seems a little bit odd to me that you just have that, you know, that gap in there. I don't know why you wouldn't fill that. Um, yeah, weird. All right, and then I'll try and do the legs. So I don't know what the best way to do the legs is. Um, I'll pop them down here a second and adjust the camera if I can. Like that. Hopefully you can see it okay. Um, and you just kind of want to separate them really because they're kind of pegged into each other. And then fold one out towards you. This is the kind of bridge bit which kind of is split into half. This, that's this foot underneath there. So you can fold that out like that. Fold that out as far as it goes. Do the same on the other side. And you can see where um, it kind of pegs into here. So there's two bits that peg into here, which kind of make it a little bit more secure. Bring the legs around like that. And you see what I mean about the kind of open section in, in here. Um, but I guess you can have Teletran in there as well if you want to. It doesn't show when you bring them up. Bring them up. And that's the bit that's dangling around, swivel the waist around, I will just adjust the camera slightly again so you can see it, um, this bit is piece, so it's going to rotate around like that, um, bring the foot out like that, so you've got the kind of blasters in the front, rotate around like that, so, and that is him done. Um, and again, on the mentioning the the kind of panels and stuff like that, they've done a similar thing to to the arms that, on the legs as I said, done to the arms, where if you fold them in, it kind of folds with that, um, which is really good. And you can hear. I swear that lost piece is somewhere in there. I don't know how on earth it's falling in there. It's a little gap in there, maybe. Um, yeah, I guess it's just in shipping or something like that. It's falling in the back of there. It's not too bad, though. And that is 
him in robot mode. I'll um, straighten him up, take a look at him uh, properly, and then we can go through the articulation. But pretty straightforward transformation. Uh, you know, you can manage to do it without looking at instructions. It's fine, but uh, yeah, all good. All right, there you go. There he is in all his glory. So he's a, he's a big old boy. Um, I'll have to do a bit of a size comparison against the likes of uh, Omega Supreme and uh, the Metroplex. But uh, I don't think he's quite as big as them. But um, yeah, he's pretty pretty nimble. Pretty, uh, It's a good looking bot, actually. You can see there he is alongside Galvatron. He's kind of like a, a Voyager figure. And then you've got um, Blur and Mainframe down the bottom. And then right down at the bottom, you've got uh, Rumble or Frenzy, depending on whatever your preference is. And you see he's a, a good size for this type of toy in terms of the kind of interaction that you can have with it. And the mic Micromasters and smaller bots uh, are definitely a good scale for this. And he's one that you could probably... He can pick up and he can hold him in his hands and you can have kind of uh, the Autobot arc crushing uh, one of the um, mini mini bots, no, the cassette tapes if you want to. So that's quite cool. Um, what I can do, just going to put the camera down now and uh, we'll take a look at the articulation. Right then, so let's concentrate on the uh, top half. So um, all the same detailing that we mentioned before obviously comes through into the robot mode. I think uh, the paint and thing works probably a little bit better in this mode in terms of you can see the weathering kind of on his shoulders um, and around the sort of top of his head and things like that. Uh, the head is really nice. They've gone for that um, kind of last Autobot sort of look, which is uh, really cool. He's got a uh, light pipe in for his eyes. Um, I guess you could take that and paint it if you wanted to, but it's good detailing going all around here. You've got some yellow paint in here um, and kind of this gunmetal gray for the face. It's got a very stern looking face as well, uh, which obviously looks like the kind of Autobot symbol. And the head just articulates from side to side. So there's no up and down. It's just kind of like on a, um, like a mushroom peg, I guess, or something like that. Um, and like I mentioned, some nice paint you know, sort of going around here. I do like the fact they've done the translucent windows as well. That looks nice. Uh, the Autobot symbols look really nice, kind of on these shoulder pieces here as well. Um, all around, there's lots of really good kind of line work and things like that. So and um, there's a lot of detailing in, even if there aren't uh, loads of kind of paint apps and things like that, even in like, kind of places where you wouldn't expect to see detailing. They've put it in there, so, you know, even places, you know, sort of like in the back of the arms and it's kind of weird places like that, you've got it. And there's lots of, like, pistons and things going on in here. Uh, loads of things, actually, you know, if you've got, like, a highlighter pen or something like that and you want to kind of add a little bit more detail than you could do, um, you could really go to town because there is lots to do and uh, look at on this one. Um, yes, yeah, so the head rotates around. The arms... Um, on very stiff ratchets and they they'll go all the way around so I mean it's got no issues there at all the it does also come out all the way out to there as well and in a little bit rotation there as well all the way around a softer ratchet up to there so it gives you a good range of motion there as well uh, the hands, um, they're all right, but they're, it's like a bit of an odd choice that they've gone with them. I'll just bring them forward a little bit so you can see them. Uh, or just the camera slightly. So they've gone with this softer hand, so it's all one piece, The these hands. So not individually articulated. You do have a slot in there to hold something like a weapon or something, but actually that looks as if it, it folds in, so I'm not even sure you'd be able to hold anything in this hand. Uh, and this thumb, which moves forward and back this way. So there's no, there's only one hinge in there. So there isn't a, a bend or anything in here. Um, nothing forward and down. But it does rotate from side to side. 
um, and you kind of get that up and down which is kind of part of the transformation here as well so you know I don't dislike the hands but it's just uh, a bit of a different choice a different way of doing things I do find it odd that they've got these kind of gaps or holes in here I don't know why they wouldn't have something that fills over those maybe um, mine is wrong I'll have to look at other reviews and samples and just see if that is correct or not but uh, yeah it's a little bit odd I think so obviously that's the same on both sides and then you do get waist articulation so again I'll stop this from falling up on uh, on him and that goes all the way around really sturdy ratchets and then let's go down to the waist Oh, that's kind of leg section. Let's just bring this down to here. I'm just going to move the arms out of the way slightly. And the legs, they come all the way out to there, so you can do the splits that way. Uh, and let's look at forward. All the way forward. And I think you can go all the way back as well. He can go more than that. Back. So huge range of motion on the legs. You get a twist at here. And what's really good about that is this piece goes around with it at the same time. Um, and it doesn't kind of ruin the sculpt or anything. So it's really nice. Uh, you've got silver paint in here. Um, the only odd thing I'm not quite sure about is the colour feels it where it's in places like here where it's a little bit off yellow it feels like the same color as kind of the kind of you know movie bumblebee toys a little bit um, so i'll see anything that i'm not quite sure about but again loads of detailing you know all in here everywhere uh, and the legs i mentioned about the the kind of it's underneath here but you can bend the knee all the way back to there so that's really nice and then the foot uh, nothing you kind of get that which goes forward and back that's about it uh, and then you get a little bit only a smidge of a kind of rocker in there but you do get one so it does allow you to kind of get some wider pose stances on him and even with that small kind of uh, rocker on there he is solid um, he's got a bit of weight to him but without he's stable you know nothing's going to fall over on him um, you know I wouldn't have an issue at all Putting him on the kind of up high somewhere like that and thinking, oh, this guy's going to fall over or anything like that. He's really sturdy on his feet and very poseable as well. Um, what we'll do next is I'll bring in some of the other Titans and larger figures and do a bit of a size comparison from there. Uh, we'll take a look at also, I want to keep calling them Teletran, but the mainframe transformer. We do a comparison against the mainframe Action Master and transform him into Teletran 1 and uh, take a look at that as well. Right, here we are. We've got him alongside Metroplex on one side and then Titan Class Devastator on the other. And you can see, obviously, he's in the middle, but he is kind of in the middle in terms of kind of scale and size class. Um, he's like a bit taller and chunkier than uh, Devastator so he's a good bit taller than him and kind of just wider and chunkier but then if you then compare him to Metroplex he is you know quite a bit smaller than him and smaller proportions and Metroplex is obviously in size with um, Fort Max and everyone else like that so um, I haven't got him to hand but he's Closer on scale with um, Omega Supreme. Um, I haven't got that one to hand to sort of bring down, but it's roughly around that. 
So next up we'll take a look at a mainframe and we'll take a look at him and do a bit of a comparison and transformation. Uh, we'll take a look at Autobot mainframe now, just as, as part of this. So we've seen the, the transformation to that kind of um, chunk that's inside of the arc, um, the Autobot arc, which we took out. Um, I will reenact the bit where we put the kind of Optimus bit in there as well. But um, just to show you, I've got the original mainframe transform. So this is the Action Master one here and his little buddy. So that's a bit of a, a size comparison just to show you what they look like. And I don't know, I've done it before. There's a deluxe figure as well. Um, and then transformation in terms of the actual Teletran 1 kind of panel. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. So you can see there's lots of panels and stuff on here. Um, it's a case of really unfolding everything. This backpack kind of comes unplugged and comes up here. This head, you can take off, push into that gap there. I think it yeah, just goes back into there. Like that. This waist swivel will go round like that. That will peg into there like so. Um, these arm pieces swivel round like that. Um, you want to ah, yeah, want to move the arm in like that. I think I've got that right. So like that, open that up, like so, and then let's adjust that slightly. Peg that into there, like so. I don't know if you can hear the wind out there. We've had uh, like storms and stuff around here, which is fairly unheard of. And you don't get them too much that comes around here and I'll peg into there like that so there's lots of panels and stuff to peg in on this uh, which makes it a little bit fiddly but you can see you, you've got um, plenty of detail coming through already there all of this is like uh, I think it's like a tan post thing but it's like a grid so it's got the arc on here with um, the Autobot arc face on there. It's like schematics and things like that. Um, you've got here the key to Vector Sigma here on this side and some other little stats and things on here. The Matrix a map of the world there as well and some kind of kind of techie readouts. There's lots of sculpted detail on here. Um, we're not too far away from kind of getting it all and there's kind of a view from the back. So it is a little bit weird looking from the back. Now these leg pieces, um, yeah, I've swiveled it around so that's right. They basically all fold out. So you fold it from this side here and it all folds out. You have a bit that comes out from here, which will go, go underneath here. This bit here on his foot, you want to swivel around like that. So it's on the side angle. Basically, you want to get this knee bit into here. Um, so he's like almost like he's, he's going to be in like a sitting position. Um, so let's put that up there. So it's like that. So that, that was easier than when I did it first time round. So unpeg all of this. Kind of fold it out. Like that. That leg is going to, foot's going to swivel round. And then kind of want to line it up. This one's going to be trickier because this bit has got to peg into that. Come on, let's try and get it all lined up. Yeah, like that. Um, that bit goes in underneath there like so. Is that right? My 
think that is it. And that's the kind of view from the back. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit weird. I think these bits here, you can use them to hold some of the golden discs. But I can only get it to hold one. Um, and it's that way around. Is it like, yeah, like that. If I put another one in, it doesn't really hold so well. So it only seems to be able to fit one in there. So I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with the other one. Uh, this in here looks like a little thing where you, in the other mode, where you can pop in your little Optimus Prime in here. And it's supposed to be like part of the arc here in um, vehicle mode. So I don't know which way around he is. Ooh. So you can kind of sit him in, in there in his little control panel there. And then he's got basically <laughs> Teletran in here. So you can have him on working on Teletran or if you've got any of the other ones in there. And then if you've got this piece in here, that's like the key to Vector Sigma in here as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, you got that kind of level of detail on there. Um, and that's kind of in like the, the different mode that we showed you before. But you, so you can keep all of that. You can keep that bit on there anyway. You can keep one of these in here um, like that. And then if you want to have like a jet, like a, a other figure alongside it, you can do it like that. So it kind of scales quite well in that respect. And then you've got the repair, repair sort of thing. And this doesn't like clip on or go anywhere. I guess you've got that, which I don't know if you've got anything that you can clip onto. I guess you could clip onto something like it's that sort of peg hole. But I don't, there isn't really, I can't see anywhere that you would like store them apart from like on that sort of peg. Um, yeah, so I don't know really where you would put him. I mean, you can pop him on top of there if you want to. Yeah, your choice really. And then transforming it into that other thing. Um, Not really sure where to start with that one. Let me take a look at that a second. All right, so I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, first thing, I'm just going to move these leg bits away from here. I think these are going to want to come back in at, at some point like that. And then these bits going to come off from here, like that, and like that on the other side, and then they're going to fold into each other like that. So again, actually you could, at this point, actually store them in there, and you've got that. like that at this point. Um, so then this bit here, uh, so that looks, so it looks like these arm pieces are gonna come in underneath. So I'm looking kind of, looking at what I've got here in terms of not exactly instructions, but what we've got off to the side. It looks like that pegs into there. Like that on either side, so that looks right. I'm trying to see. Let 
We'll just unpack this bit here a second as well. Legs. Yeah, oh yeah, so that is right. Those bits do go underneath there like that. It's so last right, so I'm kind of looking at it from a from a different angle. And then these look as if they should be folded back on each other. So it looks like they're gonna be something like that. Let's try and peg these back in on themselves. Ah, so that wants to go back round like that. Let's swivel this bit around. Again, these bits aren't that great. So that's clicked in like that. Ah, and then they're going to come around and peg in like that. Okay, so you're more or less... I don't know if this whole piece wants to come all the way around, actually. It's a bit of a faff, really, for like... I don't know, I think I had it right... I might have had it right the first time round, actually. That. That's going to peg into there. So I'm just going to do it on this side as well. So that is going to come round to here. That's going to come round to there. This foot is going to come round to there, like that. That's going to peg in, like that. And let's peg these legs in together like that. I'm just going to peg the arms back in a second and then it looks like these peg in either side like that. Um, and that that is kind of like how you pop him back into the arc in his arc mode <laughs> to, to want of a, a better phrase um, and you'll see on the ins not on the instructions on the box they kind of have it kind of pictured a bit like that um, and that's that's how it how it looks to me anyway from there so I think that's as, as good as you're going to get it and then transforming back is fairly simple. You just kind of fold everything back out again. Oh yeah, just swivel around his waist. Like that. This bit is just going to come and I'm done. Like that. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to display this guy. I think I'll display him as Teletran. It seems... Um, Seems a shame not to. It seems as it's quite a unique um, alt mode. Really. So there he is. And make sure I don't lose that as well. So right. Let's go back to the main bot. And then we'll sum everything up. Right then. So just time to sum up my final thoughts on this guy. Um, apologies, I'm having to hold the camera here, so hopefully I'm not too shaky with this. So yeah, overall, uh, well worth picking up. Not the best Titan that we've seen so far. He's not the biggest either. He does have plenty of articulation. Um, there are a few things that I would change on him if I could. Uh, the hands, I think I certainly would want to swap out. There are some kind of like hollow parts and things on here, which, um, you know, it's not great. But overall, you know, you've got some nice paint apps. You've got some blast effects on him, which are nice. I think I'd want more articulation on the head maybe, and the guns to kind of rotate around and things like that. 
Um, but you do get things like Teletran with it. Um, and, you know, it's the arc. So that's another thing. So even if you're not wanting to have him as a, a bot, you know, just keep him as the arc and have or you use him as, you know, part of a diorama, anything like that. It's a very cool figure to have in your collection. And he seems to be popping up on sale lots of places like Smith's and places like that. Forbidden Planet, I think, have had him reduced. Bargain Max and places like that. So well worth keeping a look at if you haven't already picked up this figure. Uh, that is it for now, guys. Um, I do have some other Titan class figures coming up. So I do also have a review of Scorponok and Black Zarek coming up. So stay tuned for those. That's it for now, guys. Uh, see you all soon. Bye-bye for now.